Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. welcome back to my channel. You may remember a while back I made a video about the E. Rosita mission. If you didn't, then make sure you check it out up here. In this video, we're going to be talking about one of the first results from this amazing X-ray observatory. So let's start. In the 1950s, radio astronomers discovered a giant arc extending out from the north of the galactic plane. This was later also seen by the predecessor of E. Rosita, called ROSAT, in X-ray wavelengths. Since its discovery, there has been a lot of debate as to what it actually is and what's causing it. Because even though we can see it, we don't know how far away it is, which means we can't know its size, let alone its origin. If the feature was close by, it could be the edge of a nearby local bubble carved out by a cluster of nearby supernovae explosions. But if it's very far away, it could be a gigantic cavity blown out by even stronger activity happening at our galactic center. E. Rosita launched in 2019, and it's going to scan the entire sky for X-ray emission eight times over its planned mission time of four years. Recently, E. Rosita revealed its first scan of the sky, and it's beautiful. What you're seeing here is the plane of our galaxy, the Milky Way. You can see the large Magellanic clouds down there, several supernova remnants, and much more. This bright blob down there is the neutron star SEOX1, and you can clearly see the bright X-ray arc that is the North Polar Spur. But the astonishing thing is that through E. Rosita, it's now clear there is a structure in the southern sky analogous to the North Polar Spur. This circular annular, similar in shape and size to the North, forms a pair of bubbles that are erupting out from the galactic center. So me thinking that our galaxy is a flat spiral shape has been a lie all along. Now this is important because firstly, through the study of absorption in X-ray and radio bands, we can get a lower limit on the distance to the North Polar Spur. And this rules it out of being a nearby supernova remnant. But secondly, if the feature was local, then it would be very unlikely to exhibit such symmetry that we're seeing around the center of the galaxy. These soft X-ray emitting bubbles extend approximately 14 kiloparsecs above and below the galactic center. And strangely, they line up with the Fermi bubbles. In 2010, the Fermi Large Area Telescope discovered giant bubble structures emitting gamma rays that extend above and below the Milky Way disk that they call Fermi bubbles. The origin of these gamma rays is still uncertain, but it's likely relating to activity around our galaxy's central black hole several million years ago. It must have feasted on some enormous amount of gas and dust. Alternatively, the bubble could be powered by a burst of star formation. These Fermi bubbles and E. Rosita bubbles show remarkable morphological similarity, but there are some key differences. Firstly, the Fermi bubbles are elliptical, whereas the E. Rosita bubbles are clearly spherical. The E. Rosita bubbles are comparable in size to the galactic disk, but the Fermi bubbles are only half of this size. There is a clear boundary between the E. Rosita and the Fermi bubbles, and the total thermal energy of the E. Rosita bubbles is almost 10 times larger than that of Fermi. So are the Erosita and Fermi bubbles the same? Well, it is possible that the Erosita and Fermi bubbles are not the same, but instead causally connected. The Fermi bubbles could be driving the expansion of the Erosita bubbles, with both structures being associated with the same energy release in the nuclear region of the Milky Way. The sharp boundaries of these bubbles trace collisionless and non-radiative shocks, again enforcing the idea that these bubbles are not a supernova remnant but relating to features seen in gamma rays. But regardless of the source of the bubble, these findings demonstrate that inactive disk galaxies such as the Milky Way have hot plasma in their halos that is affected by activity in their disks. 
In other words, there's some sort of feedback mechanism. So further study of these bubbles is ongoing, so more detailed properties of the bubbles will be revealed in the future, but there's no doubt that it will have big implications on our understanding of the structure and evolution of galaxies like our Milky Way. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.